I was scrolling through Instagram when I saw this incredibly smooth transition from Romaro, and I knew I had to recreate it. So today, we're diving into DaVinci Resolve, where I'll break down this effect step by step and show you exactly how to make it look cinematic and professional. All right, let's get started with Gemini. We'll ask it to generate a short text, about three paragraphs, that includes the keywords we want. Once Gemini provides the text, we'll copy it and move over to DaVinci Resolve. Now inside the Edit tab, I've already set markers based on the voice we're working with. These markers are super handy because they help keep things perfectly in sync with what we're editing. Don't worry, you can easily add your own by just pressing the M key. Next, we're going to set up a Fusion composition. We'll link it to the audio, open up Fusion, and get ready to start building our effects. Now let's add a Text Plus node to the workspace and connect it to the media out. The first thing we should do is increase the text resolution. This way, we'll be able to move the text around more smoothly. To do that, go Image section, uncheck Auto Resolution, and then set both the width and height to the maximum values. Next, let's go back to the Text section and hit Ctrl V to paste in the text we copied earlier from Gemini. You'll notice that by default it's set up as a single line of text, which isn't ideal for our tutorial. To fix this, switch to Layout and change the type from Point to Text Box. This lets us control the width and flow of the text. Now it's time for styling. I'm using Times New Roman with italic and bold turned on. Then I'll shrink the font just a bit so it fits perfectly inside the canvas. At this stage, DaVinci still reads it as one continuous paragraph. To break it into readable sections, we'll align it left, and then manually separate it into three proper paragraphs. Clean, organized, and easy to follow. And as a quick tip, if you're like me and you run DaVinci full screen but your Resolve UI is set up with a second line at the bottom, you might notice spacing issues. Just slightly decrease the font size and everything will line up properly. Alright, now let's highlight the keywords we want to emphasize. The reason is pretty simple. It makes the animation process much easier later on. To keep things straightforward, I'll add a background node along with a paint node, then connect them to the output of the text node. Just make sure the background matches the text resolution so everything lines up correctly. Technically, yes, you could connect the paint node directly after the text node, but I personally like using a background with the alpha set to zero. It keeps the workflow cleaner. Once that's set, grab the paint node, pick your highlight color, and mark the words you want to animate. Along the way, I decided to add a few extra keywords toward the end of the text. Anyway, let's move on. We'll adjust the position from the Merge node. Now let's set up the background so the whole design looks better. I want the text in black with a white background, so here's how. Add another background node, connect its output into the Merge, and change the color to white. Make sure the background is actually sitting behind the text. In my case, I just swapped the inputs with Control t Then, I'll lower the line opacity slightly so the text stays sharp and readable. With that ready, we can move into the animation. Sure, you could use a regular 2D transform node, but if we want a professional look, especially with motion blur, the 3D approach is the best option. So let's build it in 3D. Add an image plane 3D node, then a camera and a renderer 3D node. To speed things up, change the render type from software to hardware. This way, DaVinci will use your GPU instead of the CPU. Connect the renderer's output to the merge so we can see the results. Now select our Image Planner 3D and decrease the Z position until the text fits the frame exactly how you like. For the animation itself, let's open the Spline Editor so we can clearly see the markers we set. Now, instead of relying only on the Camera node, I'll be using a Transform 3D node. If you're wondering why I don't just animate directly through the camera, I actually have another video that breaks it down in detail. Alright, let's start at the first frame. Add a keyframe for both the X and Y positions. Then, jump to the first marker and adjust the values so our text lines up correctly. In this case, so it reveals the word Da Vinci. Now, you may notice something strange here. The line disappears. That happens because back in the paint node we used multi-stroke mode and that only shows the paint on a single frame. My mistake on that one. The fix is simple. Switch to the stroke icon instead of multi-stroke, and then just re-highlight your word. Problem solved. With that corrected, let's continue animating. 
Once again, adjust the Transform 3D values to position the word Da Vinci properly in the center. To make sure placement is accurate, right-click the viewer and enable a grid overlay, or just press Ctrl-G. This way you know the text sits perfectly centered. Now, add another Transform 3D node for the next step. Go back a couple of frames, set a keyframe for X at zero, then move forward to the second marker. Adjust the transform again to bring the word resolve into the center. From there, repeat the same process for each keyword. Add a transform 3D node. Step back a few frames. Set keyframes for X and Y. Then move forward to the next marker and position the word in the middle. By doing this across all markers, each highlighted keyword smoothly animates into the center of the screen, one after another. So now that we've set up all the Transform 3D nodes, select all of your Transform 3D nodes. Inside the spline, press Ctrl plus A to select all the keyframes, and then hit S to smooth them. Next, press Ctrl plus T to open the Smooth Curve settings. Now adjust both the Ease In and Ease Out to around 60%. What this does is create that natural motion curve where the animation starts off slow, speeds up in the middle, and then slows down again at the end. It's a simple touch, but it makes the entire animation look way more professional and polished. So today, we're diving into DaVinci Resolve, where I'll break down this effect step by step and show you exactly how to make it look cinematic and professional. But this still isn't the final look we're aiming for. Since we're working in 3D space, let's take advantage of that. In the Renderer 3D settings, enable Motion Blur with just one click. From there, you can adjust the quality and shutter angle to your preference. Higher settings give you smoother. Now let's give DaVinci a moment to process this, and then we can see the difference. So today, we're diving into DaVinci Resolve, where I'll break down this effect step by step and show you exactly how to make it look cinematic and professional. Great, now let's move on to the next step. First, right-click in the timeline and uncheck both motion blur and high quality. This makes DaVinci much faster while we're working, so we don't have to struggle with long, laggy renders during editing. Now, switch your view back to the Merge node, the one with both the text and the highlight line. Here, we'll clean things up by removing any unnecessary lines that we don't need after the animation finishes. Once that's done, make sure you've selected the Stroke icon in the Paint node. Then, head into the Inspector. Change the color to black. Under Brush Controls, switch the shape to a circular brush and decrease the size a bit so the line has just the right thickness. And don't forget, increase the opacity in the Merge node so the highlights appear clearly. For this part, we're highlighting in a different style, almost like a student paper with multiple underlines for emphasis. So go ahead and create several highlights across the text to match that look. Once our highlights are set up, it's time to animate the underline that we'll use to emphasize each word. The easiest workflow is to copy your background and paint nodes, paste them into the workspace, and then connect them to the output of the merge node. Now, reset the paint settings and recreate the same look as before in terms of thickness and color. But this time, inside the stroke controls, change the stroke animation mode from all frames to right on. This is what lets us animate the underline being drawn. To make it easier to work, let's customize the viewer. Open multiple viewers, one for the paint node and one for the media out. That way, we can see both the live animation and the final composite at the same time. Next, move to the frame where the camera is close to the word Da Vinci. Start drawing your underline right below it. If you hit play, you'll see the line animate into place. To control your underline animation, open the Keyframes tab. From here, you can control the animation timing in the keyframe graph. Just delete any extra keyframes you don't need. We'll repeat the same process for the second keyword. Move to the frame where the word Resolve needs to be highlighted, and start by drawing your underline. But here's something you might notice. The line suddenly shows up on the very first frame. That happens because a default keyframe was created at frame 1. 
No problem, it's an easy fix. Just open the keyframes tab, find that unwanted keyframe at frame 1, and delete it. Now the line will only animate where you actually want it to. Now for the third keyword, we'll follow the same process. Go to the frame where you want the animation to start and begin drawing. But this time, instead of an underline, I'm going to draw a circle around the word. If you play it back, you'll notice the circle animation is moving a little too slowly. To fix that, simply open the keyframes tab again. Select all the keyframes for the circle, and then press the Ease Speed Control button. That will smooth and speed up the motion so it matches the pace of the camera. Now the animation flows nicely, right? From here, you can repeat the same method for any other words you want to highlight, whether it's a line, a circle, or any other shape. And the process is exactly the same. Since it's repetitive, I'll fast forward through this part, but you now know how to handle it for every keyword. Once all the underlines are animating correctly, it's time for the finishing touches. Add an overlay node into the workspace, connect it to the output of the last merge node, and then combine them with a new merge. With this merge, change the edge of the canvas into a mirror effect, and reduce the size slightly so we get a frame shape. In the Apply mode, switch it to Linear Burn for a more cinematic tone. Now let's add some subtle effects. Drop in a vignette node and adjust the size to taste. Then add a variable blur node. This gives us the best blur in DaVinci. So now add an ellipse mask and connect it to the mask input of variable blur. Then make the right size and invert it so that only the outer frame of the screen gets blurred. Then soften the edges, leaving the center crystal clear. And there we have it. So today, we're diving into DaVinci Resolve, where I'll break down this effect step by step and show you exactly how to make it look cinematic and professional. One last tip. If you notice that your overlay image looks too static or flat, try placing it in 3D space behind your text node. This little trick instantly gives the scene more depth and makes the final render look way more polished. That's it for this video. I hope this breakdown helps you build your own animated keyword highlights in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. So today, we're diving into DaVinci Resolve, where I'll break down this effect step by step and show you exactly how to make it look cinematic and professional.